Good evening, family. Greetings in the name of our Father and our King to all the lovers of the truth out there who are really in these last days are seeking for the truth that are overcoming and that are going through the suffering even though it's hard and it's tough times believe me I know but for those of you who truly have a heart given to you by our Heavenly Father and our King to endure the trials and tribulations and sufferings that you all must go through individually as well as together all of us in the body of Yahushua giving honor to our Heavenly Father the mighty Yahuwah and to his only begotten son the mighty Yahushua today as I've been moved by our Heavenly Father and our King to speak on and been given permission by them for their honor not my own uh, a discussion that we as the people his children his people set apart in these last days need to come to an understanding many of you do know but to come to a deep revelation and understanding that there is war in the heavenly places and what I mean by war I'm not saying that our Heavenly Father and our King don't have things under control where they are in heaven and in earth believe me there's nothing going down here that our Heavenly Father has no power to stop Everything that's happening is a manifestation of his word based on the blessings and the cursings. So we all need to understand that. And that goes for people who are lying, people who are preaching and teaching false teachings, people that are leading people astray. All these things, even the movements of the enemy and his fallen messengers that are out here, the demonic spirits, trust me when I tell you, our Heavenly Father is in control. Our King Yahushua, he's in control by the power of our Heavenly Father. But today, we need to really come to a, a great understanding that there is war in the heavenly places. Not just in spiritual combat or Ruach combat, but also there's a war of words going on. There is a discussion going on between the enemies and the Most High, and His only begotten Son. And all I want to express to all of you today, and our Father and our King has given me permission to do so, is that even though I myself, as all of you out there, we're all going through trials and tribulations, but for those of us who are still trusting in our Father and our King, He is speaking, Him and His Son, they are speaking on our behalf. If we can hold fast and continue to be obedient, and not bring our Father Yahuwah nor our King Yahushua to an open shame. And if we continue to be obedient to his voice and the voice of his son, then we're going to be okay. For those of you out there who have your scriptures, please turn with me to the book of Revelations. Chapter 12. starting at verse number seven and of course these are visions that were given to our ancestor Yahukunah as they called John the Baptist I'm sorry John the Revelator even though they both had the same names the gentleman Yahukunah he was given visions of things to come and here if you look at verse seven it says, and there was war in heaven. Now let's stop there. And this is not new to many of you as far as this passage of scripture because many people have, their eyes have glanced across this passage of scripture. But just to focus here where it says, and there was war in heaven. So we have to understand, lovers of the truth, that everything that is manifested down here on the earth, the things that we see around us, don't make no mistake that the events that are taking place in the Shamayams, in the heavens, they are going to have a result on the earth. The very word of our Heavenly Father through His Son, 
whether it be blessing or cursing, it's going to play a, a, a vital role and a key role here on the earth. It says, and there was war in heaven, and Mayakyal and his Malachs fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his Malachs, as it says, angels here. So we can see here a picture of Mayaka fighting with, with Hashatan, with Satan. And so we can see the, 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 we can see the good and the bad. We can see the set apart messengers, the warriors that are in heaven fighting against the warriors of the enemy. We can see that here. And we can even see these things today. When you look around and you see the different nations fighting uh, against each other. And even though we may look at things like, wow, you know, whether it be the things that they're fighting for, as far as whether it be land or whether it be freedom or whether it be oil or whatever uh, thing that man is fighting for in these last days, we have to understand that there's a manifestation of what's going on in the heavenly places. We are being fought for. Make no mistake about that. Verse 8, it says, and prevailed not. Talking about the enemy, he did not prevail. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So it says, now we need to really pay attention here in verse 8 as we allow Heavenly Father through his Son to minister to us. It says, and prevailed not. Satan did not prevail, nor his messengers. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So we have to understand. If his place was no longer found any more. Then. And of course, many of you, I'm sure, are catching the revelation. And many of you have heard this before, but it's good to touch on these things. There was a time when he was there. This is significant because a lot of people, now, now we're not lifting him up at all because he has no power. Our Heavenly Father and our King, they have all the power. But this is very significant because a lot of people today, even when it comes to the translation of our English Bible, even when it comes to the things and the, the things that we're hearing on TV and radio, people think that this is just human power, that there's no influence whatsoever. And I want you to understand this. You hear a lot of people say angel nowadays. You hear a lot of people say, even in the secular world, people say, oh, this is my little angel. Or angel came and spoke to me. Well, the question is, what angel or what mala, what messenger have you been hearing? Because according to what we're reading here, it says, if you go back up to verse 7, it says, and there was war in heaven, and Mayakal, as they call it, Michael, it says, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. So what angels are you talking about? This is, this is something very interesting. Please look at verse, 10, verse 9. I'm sorry. It says, and the great dragon was cast out. And even those people, many of us who were in Babylon in one point, and even those who are still struggling, they at least can admit this, that he will be cast out, that he's cast out. It says, and the great dragon, the great dragon, was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Shatan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. So, here we are today, I'm just talking about I speak as a fool. And what I mean by that as far as, as mankind in general, as our Father and our King has given me the authority to do so. We as mankind today think that all these ideas, I'm talking about when it comes to wicked things. I'm not talking about beautiful, wonderful ideas and wonderful gifts that are given to mankind for the benefit of the earth and for the greater good of mankind. I'm talking about 
wicked ideas that are causing uh, havoc on the earth. We think as a people, as mankind in general, that, oh, we just, you know, we're just here and we're just thinking up these ideas. But you know the interesting thing about it? Every human being out here can attest to this. I'm sure many would agree that it's a crazy world, isn't it? You hear a lot of people saying that. In a religious world, they say that. People who are even in the truth, they have a, enough knowledge to know that it's a wicked world out here. Or as they say, it's a cold, cold world out here. But where did that coldness come from? Where did that wickedness or that hatred come from? Man is guilty of these things as far as allowing these things to influence them as a people. We, we are. As far as, a, as mankind. I'm, talk, I'm sp speaking in, in the Ruach now. So let's keep the division between those of us who are in the truth and those of us who are not. But all of us can agree that there was a point in time when we were as well with the world system. And so we are able to admit these things that we also walked in wickedness against our Heavenly Father and our King. But what I'm saying is these things are being influenced and these things are a manifestation of the things that are taking place between the enemy and the Most High. It says here, verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of Aalayam and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before Alayam day and night. That's powerful. And for many of you, if you can really see and look beyond the English language, here you can see our Heavenly Father, and you can also see the enemy making accusations to our Heavenly Father about us. Isn't that interesting? So don't think that the enemy is not watching us as well. Our Father Yahuwah and our King Yahushua are watching us. But make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, that on our day-to-day -day lives, we are also being watched, we're being spied on, and things are being reported back to the heavens. Things are being reported back to the enemy. Make no mistake of this. Verse number 11, it says, and they overcame. Who overcame? Those who put their eyes towards Father Yahuwah and King Yahushua. Those who love the truth. And this goes back even to the ancient of days. They are overcomers, and so we must be as well. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. So don't think you're going to receive salvation without coming through the blood of Yahushua. And as the scriptures attest, and as our Heavenly Father has spoken, the blood is the life. And so, if the blood is the life, and it is, is not eternal life, Yahushua, manifested from our Heavenly Father? My Quadash brothers have come to the revelation that the life was inside of our Heavenly Father. And so when our King, who is the life, was manifested and when he hung upon the tree, when his blood flowed down, is there not salvation in that? In his death, burial, and resurrection? Amen. It says, and they overcame him. Who? Shatan. As they say, Satan today. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. That's powerful. They overcame by the blood of Yahushua. But also by the word of their testimony. The witness of what our Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahushua, did for you in your life. You will give an account for that. Many of us are giving an account. We are being watched. There is a war in the heavenly places. I want you to really meditate on these things. Don't think for one second 
that the things that are manifesting as far as this argument over the name of the Most High and this argument over the name of the, of the, the Messiah and this argument against all these things about the, the, what they call the Torah movement, the Ta'ura and, and the New Covenant. The, the, all this thing, this war that's going back and forth between the set-apart children and those who were infiltrators. There, this is a manifestation of what is going on in the heavenly places. You have to understand this. Every reaction and action from our Heavenly Father and His Son, even to the enemies who try, who are still at war against our Heavenly Father and our King, it will be manifested here on the earth. Now this is something that we need to also come to an understanding. Let's look at some of our ancestors and the things that they had to go through. The things that were manifesting from heaven and how they have been manifested through those things in their, their, their very lives. Please turn with me to the book of Luke. And let's look at the life. Let's look at our Mashiach during the time when he was walking in the earth. He still is today through his set apart nature, his spirit. But this is the time when he was with his disciples. And let's look at our ancestor Kappa, as they call Peter. Turn with me, please, to the book of Luke, chapter 22. Now, keep in mind that in the heavenly places, in the book of Revelation, it spoke of this particular one being cast down, who we know as Satan, a Shatan, today, which means accuser. So here, so picture this, like a courtroom. You have the plaintiff and the defendant. So look at this in wisdom. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. This is Yahushua, our Messiah speaking. Our Heavenly Father also speaking through His Son. Inspiring His Son to say these things. It says, and the Master said, Shama'un, Shama'un, as we call Simon today. Behold. Shatan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. This is something that we need to also understand. And my brothers have, have, have been led in beautiful revelations by our Heavenly Father and our King regarding this passage of Scripture. And many of you who are lovers of the truth can see these revelations that our Heavenly Father and our King has been given to us. But just to know here that there is a deep desire that our enemy has. To bring each and every one of us down. To cause us, as Quadash children, as, as set apart from the world, children of the Most High, to bring our Father and our King to an open shame. Just like in the last message, shame. We have to understand, we as His children have to be aware that there's a desire from the enemy and His fallen angels, Malachs, messengers, that want to bring us down. And to get us into a depraved state until we end up disobeying the voice of our Heavenly Father and our King. Hence, bringing them to an open shame. Before all the heavens above, we need to understand that. Verse 32, our King Yahushua, he says, But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. So even now, as our high priest, our beautiful Yahushua, our king, he is still interceding for, our, for us on our behalf today to his heavenly father. Don't think that our king Yahushua is pleased with the constant arguing and bickering over his name and his father's name. Even though it must be done and our king, he, he must endure these things as well as our father. He, he also must endure these things. See, can you see how our Heavenly Father and our King are still enduring things? They're still going through suffering. And so we as their children must also go through suffering. The very things that they're going through is going to be manifested in our lives today. And we have to understand that. And so understand that King Yahushua is still praying for those. But the ones who love the truth. Verse 33, and he said unto him, Master, 
I am ready to go with you both into prison and to death. What a powerful statement by our ancestor Kafa. But listen what Yahushua was what he said to him in the, in the, during that time. I'm not trying to embarrass my ancestor Kafa. He's a great man of the Most High. But we must also learn from this statement that he made. Because there's times when many of us speak things in our present time, in our present area that right now this is how we feel that we're ready to 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 go all out but there are times when we don't see what's coming and he said Yahushua said I tell you Kafa the cock shall not crow this day before that you shall three times deny that you know me and that's something to think about because there's a lot of us out here saying Yahushua there's a lot of us out here saying Yahuwah. But we have to make sure that we must be ever ready and we must be ever praying. And to try to stay aware and to know that there is a desire that the enemy has. I'm not telling you to focus on it as far as you being scared. You need not fear the enemy when you are really sincerely trying to walk in truth. But understand that in every conversation, every introduction, every surrounding, you're being watched. And for those of you who are in the truth, you can tell this just by the certain conversations that you have, whether it be upon your job or wherever you go. You notice how if you're real keen in the ruach, in, 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 in the set apart nature, as they say spirit, you can literally sense how the conversation can, can, can instantly change. When you're led to speak or proclaim Father Yahuwah and King Yahushua's name as they lead you. Or when you're, when you're led to speak the truth, how all of a sudden it seems like there's an interception that tries to come. Someone tries to be, you know, nosy or come into the conversation. You can see how the enemy will... It's mind-boggling. Sometimes you can be speaking on... And I know many of you in the truth have been through these things. Because I, I have. You can see how you're speaking to someone. And someone is, is, is repenting and pouring out their heart as we done and as we still do when we're wrong. And all of a sudden, as, as our Father Nakim begins to give you what to say, then all of a sudden the enemy tries to give, them some, give, the, give someone else a uh, game save to try to uh, interrupt what's coming out of your mouth. And many of you, I'm sure you're in agreement with me. And so we have to be careful in these last days. But just understand that even our ancestor Kafa. He had to go through some things that even the enemy, through conversation, many of you know the story, what happened in the past. Of course, he's been forgiven and he's a powerful brother. Our Heavenly Father and our King's power moved Kafa in such a way where he became a stronger man after this, this particular uh, slip. He didn't fall. Satan will try to make us slip, but if we hold on to our Father and our King, we won't fall. So just understand that these things are, we can be vulnerable to these things if we're not careful. Now, let's, let's go back. This is a, a solid foundation that we need to understand. Again, as our Father and our King has given me permission to speak, nothing on this earth, in the earths, nor in the heavens, nothing has precedence over our Heavenly Father. So don't think just it's angels or, or Molochs out there just acting all wild out there and Father you who are just sitting there scared. I, I, uh, I disagree. Our Heavenly Father is so powerful. He's beyond power itself. But don't think for one second that he does not know what's going on. And don't think the one by his right hand, his son, his only begotten son, is a stranger to these things. Now, please turn me to the book of Yasha Yahu, Isaiah, as many of you know. Please turn with me, just for a solid foundation that our Heavenly Father and our King has given. Isaiah chapter 45, please. And take a look at verse number 7. This is a solid foundation. Our Heavenly Father is speaking here through, this, through the English language as is expressed here to us. But understand what he's saying. He says, I form the light and create darkness. I 
He says, I make peace and create evil. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. Stop right there. You know, and many of us, and of course in Babylon, many of, many of the, the so-called ministers, many of them will not even read this passage of scripture to their congregations. Because they know a lot of hands would go up in their churches. But understand that word evil when you really do a good word, word study on it. It means trouble. See, people today think that our Heavenly Father won't bring trouble. But I think many of you out there who, who believe that lie need to really humble yourselves and really read the scriptures. Because when you begin to really get into his word and the accounts, you will see that our Heavenly Father, he will bring judgment when it's time. And don't think for one second that our Heavenly Father won't send his wrath down upon the earth. Listen closely. He says, I form the light. And create darkness. I make peace. And create evil. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. If I heavenly father, you hear the world today talking about peace. This world peace they talking about. Why do you think the world is, is speaking these things? Has not our heavenly father sent them strong delusion to do so? If our heavenly father says no peace, then guess what? There's no peace coming. Do you understand? If our Heavenly Father says there's going to be war, then you can be confident that there will be war. Understand. So when you hear people say that, oh, of course, they say God. And, you know, they're speaking from the light that they know. Some of them know what they're really doing. But, but even for those who have an honest heart and really are lovers of the truth, but they just haven't made it that they, they haven't made it there yet. Even they know that's 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 not right. When someone sits here and says, oh, he doesn't bring destruction. And then when you go into the scriptures, you see different accounts. During the Exodus period, when Farah and his army tried to come against the children of Yashrael, what happened? Did he not drown them in the Red Sea? Did he not bring the plagues? When the children of Yashrael, when our ancestors got out of line and did not repent, did he not... Drop their carcasses in the wilderness? Did he not send fiery serpents to bite them and many of them died? Did he not cause the earth to open its mouth to swallow them down? Did he not even send Molochs, as they say angels, to slaughter those who were in sin? Our Heavenly Father, he's a loving and kind Father. And his only begotten Son. They are kind, they are very loving. But understand, if you continue to rebel against them, you will suffer the consequences severely. Now let's look at, again, keep in mind, so far we've learned many things so far. Very interesting, my brothers and sisters. We've learned that there are, we know that there's war in heaven. But now we're going to see that there's even discussions talked about in the heavenly places. Turn with me please to the book of 1 Kings, Malachi. And let's look at the accounts of Jehoshaphat. As they say Jehoshaphat today. Let's look at the, the, the in the past. We're going back. We're looking at the, the uh, gentleman, the king Ahab. And let's see what happens. 1 Kings chapter 22. Bear with me because we're going to really go into it as our Father King leads us. Starting at verse number one, it says, And they continued three years without war. Why? Because our Heavenly Father, through His Son, even during this time, our, His Son is the very Word. So don't think that the Son was not with Him or inside of Him. He's always been with His Father. It says, And they continued three years without war. Why? Because Father Yahuwah said so. Between Syria and Yashra'al. And it came to pass on the third year that Yahushaphat, the king of Yahuda, came down to the king of Yashra'al. This was during the time when the kingdom was split due to sin. 
It says, And the king of Yashra'al said unto his servants, Know you that Ramaut in Gaelad is ours? And we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? He was asking the question. Verse 4, And he said unto Yahushaphat, Will you go with me to battle to Ramaut, Gaelad? And Yahushaphat said to the king of Yashrael, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. And Yahushaphat said unto the king of Yashrael, inquire, I pray you, at the word of Yahuwah today. What a wise king. Our ancestor, Yahushaphat. Even though these were Hebrews coming together, and he was a passionate Man, he still is. But yet, before we go, he wants to make sure that Father Yahuwah said it's okay. Now, let's listen. Then the king of Yashrael gathered the prophets together. About 400 men. Pay attention, please. And said unto them, Shall I go again against Rama, Ramaut Gaelad? To battle, or shall I forbear? Now let's listen to what these prophets says. And they said, go up, for Yahuwah shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Isn't that interesting? Now, of course, let's keep on reading. Oh, this, let's keep on reading. It says, verse 7, And Yahushaphat said, <laughs> I love Yahushaphat. He was a wise king. The Ruach of our father and our king was inside of this gentleman. He said, is there not here a prophet of Yahuwah besides that we might inquire of him? Stop. Yahushaphat, through the wisdom of our father and our king, knew that these prophets were liars. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see if they be of Allah. And Yahushaphat was a gentleman who was one of these men. 